Here we go. Probably one of the most controversial videos that I will ever make on the channel. I generally stay away from this style of video, but I felt like it was appropriate because I get a lot of questions on the channel about high value and budget accessories, as well as a ton of requests lately for made in the USA products. The problem is, is when I post a lot of those made in the USA product reviews, I get a lot of complaints from viewers saying there's no way I could ever afford that. Why don't you review something people can actually afford. When I review something people can actually afford, people say, hey, this is a bunch of made in China garbage. Quit reviewing this stuff and review some made in the USA products. And it goes back and forth. And to be honest, I'm going to continue to review things at the entry level for people just getting into the hobby, whether it be something like optics, knives, or flashlights. And I'm also going to review top tier premium items like made in the USA or even made in other countries like Japan and a few others. So it's a wide variety on this channel and I'm not really going to change anything. I just wanted to dig a little bit deeper and explain the differences between made in China, made in other countries, as well as made in the good old United States of America. To start off with, this is not like a political video. I'm not going to be digging into too much of that. It's just purely discussing the economics and the understanding of uh, made overseas and made in the U.S. And honestly, I wish everything that I reviewed on the channel could be made in the U.S. Uh, at incredibly affordable prices. But unfortunately, in 2024, that's just not possible. So let's dig into reality and let's rewind our clocks back to 1979. U.S. and China had reestablished their diplomatic relations and actually signed a bilateral trade agreement. And that actually just rapidly expanded the growth between us and China. It was at about $4 billion at the time between exports and imports. And then up to 2022, it increased to $750 billion. And that is what really solidified our trade status with China was that bilateral trade agreement in 1979. You fast forward to 1994. NAFTA opens up the borders between Canada, U.S., and Mexico, really solidifying that uh, that international trade agreement, but also being able to bring things from up and below or above and below the United States of America into the country. Now, whether you agree with it or not, it's just the way it is now. And uh, I'm not going to have those political discussions on this channel, but I did want to let you guys know when we started seeing the influx of uh a foreign product into the U.S. from China was definitely around uh, the early 80s. Now, what does it made to be ma uh, uh, made in the USA? What does that mean? And, and it means like uh, substantially all significant parts, processing and labor that go into a product must be of U.S. origin. So a lot of companies uh, will put USA flags on their products. A lot of companies will put uh, the word USA, but to to actually put the words made in USA, most of it has to be originated from here, parts and components, and most of the labor has to be done here, if not all of it. Now, assembled in the USA is different. Those uh, parts can be manufactured elsewhere, shipped to the United States of America, and then most of the assembly work is done here. Now, that kind of excludes basic assembly work like screwdriver. It has to be some fitment, some customization, uh, some adaptation of that, and every single product is different, but assembled in the USA is is going to definitely be different than made in the USA because a lot of those parts and components are going to be made elsewhere. And then there's simply things like this, my 704 tactical knife right there on the side, made in China. I don't try to hide the fact that a lot of the products I review are made in China. It just is what it is when it comes to entry level products. Now, where do I go from here in this video? I want to talk a little bit about my experiences trying to source something in the U.S. on an engineering project that it's going to remain anonymous, but this was outside of my day job as a mechanical engineer. I was working on a side project with some other business partners, and I was tasked with um, sourcing different vendors to make our product. Um, to remain confidential, I'm not going to say too much about it other than when I went to source the product in the U.S., I contacted a ton of different sheet metal vendors that I've been working on at a regular basis through my engineering job. All of them turned the project down. They said that's not something we do in the U.S. anymore. I asked and asked and asked, and I have a, a call log and a record of about 20 to 25 sheet metal vendors in the U.S. that just flat out turned down the project. 
Now, the product we were going to be selling was generally going to retail for right at about $150 US. And when you're prototyping, you obviously expect to pay very high prices. Our prototyping costs, when we finally found U.S. vendors that would not guarantee production, just guarantee a prototype, was close to $100,000 for tooling just to see if it would work. Imagine a startup, just a mom and pop with a few dollars in the bank, trying to bridge that barrier of entry to compete with U.S. Uh, sheet metal giants, and you have a $100,000 uh, barrier to entry, let alone at the end of the $100,000, our cost of the product from the U.S. would be five hundred dollars per product. That's at scale. That's after prototyping. That's after debts are paid back on equipment used. That's after everything. Our final cost on the product would be $500. To make that a feasible selling product, we would have to sell it for at least $1,000 after shipping and a return on investment and paying staff. And that $1,000 product was already being sold for close to about $150 in different configurations delivered. So we were about $850 too much if we went in the U.S. When we went to China, the floodgates opened up manufacturers are ready, willing, and eager to do business with you, and the tooling cost was wrapped up into the product, and our landed product now can be sold for right at about $150. The startup cost was a 20th of what it was in the U.S. The product cost was a 10th or a 15th of what it was in the U.S., and the product quality was actually better from China when it came to the fit and finish and craftsmanship of the product for the sheet metal component. Now, granted, this was a large non-scale technical sheet metal component that generally the U.S. just doesn't do anymore. We just don't have factories that are willing to do this or are capable of doing it without substantial startup costs. To create that product in the U.S., we would have had to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars to just see if it would work and a lot of times that's just not feasible. Roll that over into some of the other companies I want to discuss today, and that's where this video really came from. I've been getting a lot of questions about where our knives are made, and in every video I try to make it clear, these guys are 100% made in China. We don't try to hide that fact. It's stamped on the side. We don't put deceiving USA flags on there or anything like that. We are coming out with a high value and budget product. Now, again, when we were looking at producing knives in the U.S., um, you're really stuck with a lot of limitations, including that a lot of these U.S. knife manufacturing facilities are actually shutting down and moving overseas back in the 90s, and they just don't make a ton of knives here in the U.S. anymore. And when they do, don't get me wrong, they're amazing quality, but your bare minimum going to be at $70 to $80 at scale if you already own a factory as a massive million-dollar corporation – or if you're a startup like me, yeah, we can break into that, but it requires creating that own machining facilities, developing relationships, and then selling a product at the bare minimum to start off with $150 to $200 per knife. And that's just not what I wanted to do for my viewers. These knives right here are made in China, but hey, shameless plug right here. We've got a 15% code running on this guy right now with D2 coated steel or D2 steel blades with a coating over them. G10 handles, brass bushing design, completely reversible pocket clip, super smooth action. I mean, just an amazing knife. And after the discounts, this thing is 23 bucks shipped to your door. We can't do that if we make these in the US. We can only even get close to doing this when we're made in China and then freighting them over here. And even with export costs and import costs and all that stuff, we're still not making a ton of money. So you guys can see that uh, for us, making the knives in China was the only feasible way to bring you guys a high value product that actually worked. Now I'm going to explore doing a US knife production, but that takes a lot of startup costs. And I really like to break into that category. So if you guys have some suggestions of where I can start tooling and start sourcing USA made knives, I would love to start digging into that to add to our company's collection. I just know they're going to be pretty expensive and that's okay because there's a lot of good products out there. I'm also tr not trying to knock US vendors. There is a ton of 
killer U.S. vendors on the market popping up every day, creating some amazing products, and I've worked with them in my day job for years. We have some great engineering outfitters in the United States of America. We have some great factories in the U.S. producing some amazing stuff. It's just a lot of stuff is stacked against them, um, and it's just hard to overcome a lot of those things. Now, there's also a distinction between a U.S.-based company like 704 Knives. Um, this is a U.S. company. My business partners are in the U.S. Like We are a U.S.-based company that sources our products from China. There's also Chinese companies that sell Chinese products, and then there's also other companies from uh outside the United States that source their products to China and then import them here into subsidiaries. So there's all different ways around it. Um, but a lot of companies that I work with that do source their products from China, uh, some can be Chinese companies and some can be U.S. companies sourcing their products from China. Another thing you may want to consider is a U.S. company may own the factory that's actually located in China or own part of the factory. And then sometimes uh, factories are just contracted out. Uh, we contract from a company that makes knives for a large scale, a lot of different large scale knife companies on the market already. We don't own part of the factory. We're contracting out of that factory that makes them for everybody else. I don't believe any large knife company owns a stake in our particular uh, knife factory that we're using. So uh, just some interesting considerations there. Now, moving along and breaking out of the knives, I want to talk a little bit about optics. A lot of guys will say, hey, why don't you review like a U.S. optic like uh, Vortex? Well, I do. And when I review one of the the uh, U.S. produced like Vortex Razor, uh, AGM Red Dots or something like that, they're like, that's way too expensive. Review one of Vortex budget optics. Those are going to be made overseas. Not all companies make all of their products in one location. They have factories scattered about. And this is not a knock to Vortex. Again, I, I'm making my knives in China. This is just an understanding that each product can be made in different locations. If you're looking at companies that make a lot of their optics um, here in the U.S., you can find EOTech, Leopold, Night Force, Steiner, Trigicon, and U.S. Optics. But some of those companies also have their entry-level models being made overseas, and you can't really tell the difference. I mean, you can definitely look in and dig and see where they're made, but a lot of those companies are relying off their reputations of being a U.S.-made product, whereas some of their entry-level products are actually made overseas, and it can be deceiving to some people. I'm not saying they're trying to deceive people by any means. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying my viewers may be a little bit confused um, when they think there's very affordable U.S. optics on the market. Um, I review a lot of high value and budget optics, and primarily they are made overseas in China. Um, even the next tier up, the more premium options, a lot of them will have Japanese glass or made in Japan. Those are absolutely amazing optics, but they're not made here. Um, and you can grab some night forces for two or three grand that are made in the USA. And I would encourage you guys to do that. There's some absolutely amazing products. But when I review a night force on the channel or I review a top tier Leopold that's made in the USA, my entire comment section acts like I am the worst person in the world for reviewing a product that my viewers can't afford. So it's definitely a give and take. I wish we could have our cake and eat it too. I wish we could have a $100 scope that checked all of the boxes that was made in the U.S. It's just not physically possible with today's economic climate. It's just not possible with today's labor rate, tooling costs in the United States of America. I really wish we could have everything, but even companies like traditional American companies are starting to move products overseas to get affordable prices. And when you really dig in, you'll be able to see exactly where they're made. I hope this video sheds some light on the channel of why I do review a lot of made in China products. My number one, absolute number one concern on this channel is you guys. You guys getting a good product that actually works. It's not really where the product comes from. It's not really the country of origin. It's, it's not really profit margins on things. It is truly making sure when I pick up a product, it is one of the absolute best products that actually works that will not break the bank for my viewers hands down. Like that is what I focus on. And because of that, you are going to see a wide variety of products from different countries of origin 
on the channel and I want to be fully transparent. And I believe I've been fully transparent on the channel for years, but I would figure I'd make this video and just kind of dig in a little bit deeper. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below what you think about this. And also let me know your thoughts in the comments section below after you do a little research what companies you thought were made in the U.S. but are actually made overseas. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.